Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. I am very honored uh, to have Congressman Brad Sherman on the air with us. Harvard uh, Law School, this is education, J.D., magna cum laude, UCLA, B.A., uh, he goes on, an instructor, Harvard Law School International Tax Program. His bio goes on and on, so he can certainly speak to the fact of martial law. We've talked to other congressmen here on air that have said, yes, they've been threatened with the U.S. collapsing, martial law being installed. The Army has announced in the Army Times uh, that, oh, NORTHCOM's de- de- uh, deploying a brigade, going to bring others in for civil unrest. We'll use our microwave cannons on the people. I mean, this is all happening in the last week. And we saw the financial terrorism of the White House saying, pass this bill, give us immunity, give us all this power, or we're going to have a depression. And then it didn't pass Monday, so the market dropped $1 trillion, $200 billion. If that isn't economic terrorism, I don't know what is. So we have the Congressman on with We only have him for five minutes, five, six minutes. Uh, Congressman Brad Sherman, thank you for coming on, sir. Good to be with you. You know, Wall Street used uh, these... Uh, panic uh, tactics to get us to pass this $700 billion, uh, well, what the bill really is, is $700 billion in unmarked bills. They said the market would drop by 4,000 points, blood would flow in the streets, and uh, lions would be devouring children in the parks of Los Angeles. Now that the bill is passed, our economy is still going to be very bad uh, in the fall and winter, but the Wall Street folks will come out and say, well, it was a great bill. After all, <laughs> there are no lions in the parks of Los Angeles. So um, we've uh, we've got to do everything we can to focus people's attention on this bill as it's carried out, because uh, it allows Paulson to go up to Wall Street. He can give money to one uh, firm. He cannot return phone calls from another firm. Uh, he can uh, uh, take. He, he, he can, if he want, finds out uh, which firms are donating to the 527 organizations which take secret contributions and then make political advertising. He can look at the RNC donor list. He can do anything he wants. Congressman, I know that you're moving forward now, as a good congressman would, for your constituents now that the corruption has passed through economic terrorism. But let's go back to what you said on the floor in the last 24 hours about members of Congress and I've talked to some, they're, they're afraid to even come on and talk about it, being told there will be martial law in America and we'll just do this with or without you if you don't do this. That is incredible. And I just had the former head of the Treasury on earlier, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts from Reagan, had a policy saying that this, this gives them economic martial law. Well, I, don't, I know that uh, some comments like that were made. I didn't take them uh, seriously. I, I know some would. Uh, I thought it was just an uh, overblown effort to uh, create a panic uh, in order to pass a bad bill. Is that not terrorism? Is it, I mean, is not the definition to threaten harm or carry out harm for a political aim, sir? Well, they didn't say they'd shoot anybody. Um, so uh, usually terrorism involves threats of, of violence and whether uh, a drop in the Dow is violent or not, I mean, I'm sure that uh, somebody would, had a heart attack when the market dropped a, uh, a few hundred points. But keep in mind, the, we passed the bill, and I'm told the market is down. Is it the not? Idea, this, uh, well, well, sir, we have cyber terrorism. They call hacking terrorism under the Patriot Act, uh, Section 802. Any action, you know, they claim that, uh, is even a misdemeanor as terrorism. I mean, I have a, mm-hmm. to have a trillion, two hundred billion dollar loss in one day with them fear mongering. I call that economic terrorism. Well, I, I don't think of it as that big a loss. That was. You know, if uh, somebody on the other side of town sells their house at a fire sale price, I don't really think that makes me think all of a sudden I'm a lot poorer. I understand. But there are a few people who sold at fire sale prices uh, on uh, on last Monday, and uh, the fact is if they held – I mean, the same people who say we lost a trillion dollars uh, uh, Monday would say, well, we made back two-thirds of a trillion Tuesday – the whole GDP of this country is only $14 trillion. I don't think we made a trillion or lost a trillion on anyone. Sir, here's the $64 million question. 
you and other members of Congress say, yeah, well, there were some people threatening martial law, but we don't, you know, you know, think they meant it. They were just trying to to fearmonger, which I call mm-hmm. terrorism, into it. That's a huge issue. Specifically, sir, we need to know names. Who told you that they were told that uh, martial law and blood in the streets, as you said, what happened? Private conversations between members on the floor. You, you really can't reveal without the, the permission of the other uh, I understand, but were there arm twisters coming up, or were they scared? I mean, how was it said, specifically? I, I think these were people who really believed what they were saying. I don't think these were people who uh, uh, were, you know, got called by uh, Goldman Sachs and said, well, go say this or go say that. The the panic takes a um, uh, a life of its own. One person says market will drop 2,000 points. Somebody else says 2,500. Somebody else says 3,000. Somebody else says... Uh, the unemployment will jump immediately to nine percent. Somebody hears it that spreads. It gets worse and worse. So something. Yeah, so I mean, I, I don't think there was, uh, or at least I'm not aware of uh, uh, this being, you know, carefully orchestrated. But uh-huh. I think now what we have to do is expose those circumstances where we're bailing out a particular firm. And how many of the executives at firm are continuing to make a million dollars a year, five million dollars a year, twenty million dollars a year? That's the, the message that, that that needs to get out each and every time uh, assets are, are are purchased by Treasury on this. By the way, Congressman, you are for the listeners uniquely positioned to be able to comment on all this. Uh, you worked for some of the uh, you know most important and prestigious uh, firms doing audits of multinational corporations and of government entities. Uh, so you know what you're talking about. I, these I mo- know what I'm talking about, but there's going to be a lot of information that is not public, and it's going to take investigative reporters to find out things that congressmen can't find out and that the public is not going to be aware of. You know, I have to I have to go right now, but uh, it's been a pleasure being with you. Sir, let us get you back on for longer in the near future. Thank you, Congressman. Look forward to it. Thank you. Uh, we skipped that break because we got him on a few minutes late, and then uh, he only had about five, six minutes. So there you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there were people on the floor saying they were told martial law and literal blood in the streets uh, if this didn't happen, and they were told this, but I can't tell you who told me. Meanwhile, the Army is in the Army Times, Saying, oh, we're here for you know for civil emergency, martial law. The John Warner Defense Authorization Act says that the governors run nothing, Congress runs nothing. PDD fifty one, it's all there, and this is being threatened. And now, according to Paul Craig Roberts, Doctor Roberts earlier, this gives economic martial law power to the Treasury. So one way or the other, they got it. 